it was uh, for the amount of $2,729.90. And uh, I, I did not include the, the bill uh, history for this one, but it's approximately $84 a month every month since then uh, that's been accumulating, so it's a little over $3,500 now. Um, the entire utility bill for this property goes back years, and, and so that amount is in the tens of thousands. And so what we're really asking you to do is um, uphold the city's own ordinance that says we will lien a property when it's six months in arrears. And the lien is very clear about the amount in there and it all amounts to forward. Uh, so uh, it would be unusual for me to advocate uh, on behalf of anybody else. Uh, but with Mr. Duval not here, his position is he would like all of it waived. Uh, my recommendation to you as your clerk treasurer is that we stick with the lien as written. I don't know that we, we don't. The lien as we don't. I don't think we need a motion. Well, well, because it's already allowed. Yeah, it's yeah. We, our position is this. Yeah, already. So I think this is more of an information thing. I would. Uh, I wouldn't want us. I wouldn't. I wouldn't recommend taking action uh, essentially against somebody. No, it's 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 basically we went through a year and a half of trying to get this thing taken care of. Found out the problem was how fast we were doing the liens. Got that fixed. Yeah. And this is after after everything. If it was before, yeah. then we'd have something. But it's all happened. We've dealt with this issue. People have come before us before and said. Hey, I didn't know that that debt was there because it was hidden and it was only recorded at City Hall. Yeah. It wasn't recorded at the county when I bought this property. Had I known this debt existed, I would have negotiated a different price uh, with the, you know, whoever yeah. sold it. I would have accounted for that in my valuation. Here, it's a different situation where we have recorded that debt somewhere else. So if you were doing your due diligence as a, you know, a land, a real estate <coughs> investor, you should know. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we are owed the, that money. So, you know, if he was before us, your options would be do not do nothing or do what he wants or come up with something else. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I, I would say that he's welcome to come before us and, and plead his case. But we uh, have worked this, hard yeah, to prevent point, these situations. Yeah. At this point, we've done everything that we possibly could. We've changed every structure that we've had with the water bill to try to avoid people coming back like this and, with the, and, and saying that, well, we didn't know. <coughs> Hold the line. Yes. <coughs> All right, now we're at appointed officials. Uh, so we have before us a recommendation to confirm the appointments of Judge, the reappointments of Judge Thomas Meyer as Municipal Court Judge and Mr. Will Rutherford as Planning Commissioner, position number two. Are you asking for both on one, or because it looks like these are two separate positions? They are should, two separate positions. There should be two separate motions. I agree. Okay, then I move to reappoint Judge Thomas L. Meyer as uh, Municipal Court Judge for the City of Tonight. Second. It has been moved and seconded to confirm the reappointment of Judge Thomas L. Meyer as Municipal Court Judge. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Motion passes. Aye. Now we are at Will, Mr. Will Rutherford, Planning Commission position number two, and all, he's also now our, uh, he's been our chair for probably three years now. Okay. I move to reappoint. Uh, Mr. Will Rutherford as Planning Commissioner position two. Second. There, it has been moved and seconded to <coughs> confirm the reappointment of Mr. Will Rutherford as Planning Commissioner position two. Uh, I, I, I just want to say that Will does an excellent job, and he is, is he has now served for six years. It's hard to believe that it's been that long, uh, but Will is an I. I consider him an incredible asset to the city of Tenino as a planning commissioner and also as a, as a you know, just a, a general advisor. He's, he's very, very intelligent and creative. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? 
Motion passes. Thank you. That brings us to resolutions. 2018-02 uh, movie night at the last council meeting of the council. At the last meeting of the council, the administration brought this action forward in the form of, of an administrative permit. The council asks that we bring it forward at this time, the next meeting of the council, in the form of a resolution. Resolution 2018-02 would authorize employees and patrons of the Timberland Regional Libraries to Nino Branch to conduct and attend movie nights in the park. The resolution waives the administrative fees and deposits for such use and exempts such employees and patrons from normal park hours. This is a resolution of the city of Tenaya, Washington, supporting Timberland Regional Library's Tenaya Branch Movie Night in the Park, whereas Timberland Library, Tenaya Branch, here and after is the library, has provided many services throughout the years that enhance the quality of life for both Tenaya residents and visitors. And whereas the library has developed another event that provides wholesome opportunities for families and individuals, which they may have named movie night at the park, and whereas the library seeks to keep operating costs to a minimum, and whereas the program envisions the use of park facilities that extend beyond the normal operating hours of the park, now therefore be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Tenaya, Washington, that certain fees shall be waived and certain exemptions shall be granted to employees and patrons of the Timberland Regional Library Tenaya Branch Movie Night at the Park program as follows. Section 1, all use of fees, charges, deposits, and rents as shown in the most current City of Tenaya Consolidated Fee Schedule are waived for any and all activities related to the Movie Night at the Park as shown in the schedule of events published by Timberland Regional Library. I'm going to make you read these from now on. Uh, the provision of Tenaya Municipal Code 1608150 shall be deemed not to apply to employees and patrons of the library's Movie Night at the Park program. Section 3 provided, however, that all movie night at the park program activities shall be provided at least 90 days in advance with the city's public works department. The purpose of this coordination is to ensure that there are no scheduling conflicts with any park facility. Provided further that Timberland Regional Library, I thought you were only going to refer to them as a library here and after, shall pay for the cost of any cleaning, repairs, or maintenance required as a result of any movie night at the park activities, the library should conduct a walkthrough of anticipated facilities to be used for each night's schedule activities with a resident of the park works department prior to each activities. Uh, the result of this walkthrough shall be recorded on a form provided by the city to this purpose with any existing deficiencies in the facilities. Noted the library shall not be responsible, shall not be responsible for any pre-existing deficiencies. We should leave that out. <laughs> that in there. You didn't read the fine print library. Uh, passed it. You got to pay for the sprinklers. Passed at a regular meeting of the Tsunano City Council this 23rd day of January 20th, 2018. Full approval. Second. It has been moved and seconded to approve resolution 2018 02. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those. You can't even want to. Those opposed? Motion passes. Next is resolution resolution 2008 2018-03 fee schedule <laughs> amendment. Uh, this is to correct an error for the rate at which the city charges for each 100 additional cubic feet of water dispensed from a city hydrant. Add the city's municipal rate for bulk water. Add parking fees for city-owned parking spaces. Uh, these fees can only apply, only be charged if the council adopts an ordinance and establishes fees for parking. So that would only take place if that happens. But uh, that is the resolution. Motion to approve 2018-03. Second. It has been moved and seconded to approve resolution 2018-03. Resolution of the City of Tenaya, Washington, amending the 2018 Consolidated Fee Schedule. This one's way longer, so I'm not going to read the entire thing. Uh, whereas Ordinance 8, okay, this is resolution of the City of Tenaya. It is posted, and uh, and I stated the only things that are changing, which are to correct an error for the rate of the, which the city charges for each 100 additional cubic feet of water. So we had a discrepancy there and add the city's municipal rate for bulk water. That was uh, uh, something that was adopted three or four years ago. Um, and it was adopted when we started looking at the water that we put into the quarry pool and we came up with a separate rate at the time, but it never made it into the fee schedule. 
and we have city-owned parking spaces um, that if we're going to address that we would have to also establish some ordinances so there's more work to be done there we have a motion we have a second is there any discussion yes on the parking fees why are we charging for parking all of a sudden yeah. if, if you put it in here it's going to happen but we can't unless there's an ordinance so you have to take you have to make one if that's going to happen or we can just take this out and adopt it without the parking fees in there that is for you to decide well, that's we got a motion on the table right now to accept it as is i i think we need to, i don't have a problem with any of the rest just the parking fees if you leave the parking fees in there sooner or later somebody's going to come on and say oh we're supposed to charge for parking so let's go ahead and do that it's going to happen we're not olympia lacy doesn't even charge for their for their parking and lacy has over 100 parking uh, stalls this this is not for parking this is these couple spots right here so the sit there are there are stalls for city hall parking mm -hmm. and if you've looked out the front window you will see a sea of cars that are bleeding into places like alleys and so that really i mean I, I don't want to name names but if you look out that window we are getting a car issue we are getting double parked cars that are you know i don't know if they're operating or whatever but it is that it is turning into a car lot and the car lot is bleeding into our city hall parking spaces but, but that's that's a whole different issue than parking than charging for parking that goes to nuisance vehicles or something along those lines no, not not for completely. those spaces it, it, the way that we have it set up right now the city hall parking spaces mm -hmm. there is no difference between those parking spaces and parking on the curb in front of my house so and i can park a car i could i could take my car and i could park it in rana's parking spot for the next six months and not move it and there's no issue this is not talking about parking spots in front of the sandstone okay. cafe okay then instead of instead of saying well we're going to charge up to sixteen thousand sixteen hundred a year uh, address this because does it say that this last the very last one sixteen hundred per uh, permit yearly uh, 150 bucks a month, 48 dollars a week, 12 dollars a day, two dollars off the first 15 minutes free, two dollars an hour. So if we've got a problem with people taking those spots for an inordinate amount of time, that's the issue that needs to be addressed. Because but you because can't address it until you say you can't do it. Oh, that's that's what we mean. That's what I mean. When you address if you get a problem with people parking someplace that shouldn't be parking there, but they can because it's allowed under law, then we need to change that, not charge people for parking there, because that's not going to change anything. Somebody would just come up with $1,600 maybe. Or the other part is it's going to cost us more for towing because eventually we end up towing the vehicles that they didn't pay. Um. The, you know the, the way that the simplest way that I would see it is you sell a permit and if you know if you're maybe or you know maybe Rana needs a parking permit or Rana has a parking permit for her car uh, you know you, what you do okay so Rana purchases her parking permit or we provide it as a part of an employee uh, you know thing and then if you don't have one you are in that one stall that is a 15 minute stall for doing city hall business and then you get out of there but we have to set it up in a way that you cannot park your car and uh you know and, and just leave it there no, no, i understand that but charging a parking fee is i don't believe is the proper way of doing it okay. setting limits on the parking and then enforcing those limits is the way to do it because even if somebody does even if somebody comes over here, they pay two dollars for the first hour, and they don't come back. That's a total offense. Right now, it's not. We don't have any repercussions to stop somebody from doing the parking that you're do that you're saying right now. And charging them for that spot is not going to change that. But if they know that if you park your car here, and it's here for for whatever amount of time and you don't get it moved, the city's going to move it for you, and this is what's so, going to So then you've got an issue where 
Jonathan White's got to come by with a little chalk piece and mark it on a mark it on a tire, and then mark down the time, and then come back three hours later, and we've got a all of a sudden we've got a, you know we've got a you know we've got a parking attendant issue. If it's a, I you know this I'm trying to think this is probably not the way to hash this out, uh, but. But like if it's said, as simple as if you don't have a sticker, you don't get to park here, it makes it easy for us. And then Jonathan doesn't have to mark tires. Jonathan goes, no sticker, out of here. So, so we've got a motion on the table. Uh, you know, how, Let's think about how we want to address this. We've got a motion on the table to adopt this resolution as presented. Uh, there, are, there, are, there are fees in here. However, there is no ordinance... Uh, to allow the enforcement of these, that would have to be uh, figured out later. So you can you could you could pass it as it's written, and then we could work on ordinances. Uh, you could you could make an amendment to Dave's motion, and then we could discuss that amendment. And then we could come back and work on the amended motion. Uh, you could, or we just vote on it and see what happens. Or you know, you got any further? I can see his point, but I'm not too worried about it uh, coming up later. I mean, if it comes up and somebody wants to do it, then do it. But it's, I, don't, I don't see it. Leaving it in there is causing a problem later on myself. But, uh, but I see your point. I do see your point that it makes it easier just to say, okay, we're going to do this. Mm -hmm. So I, I can see that, but I'm not. See, what worries me about, about this right there, <laughs> and then I'll go ahead and make my amendment, is that I, I've been here doing this stuff for this is my fifth term i've been here since 96. okay during that time i've seen draft 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 and that's what this is and draft just means we're going to do it a little bit later on when you're not really paying any attention and i've seen it time and time again <coughs> yeah. later. Yeah. I'm gonna get you. And, and that's it you know unfortunately i've seen that i'm going to get you later too many times during that that expanse of time that I've been doing this. So my my uh, amendment would be to adopt the fee schedule without the parking requirements. And we can address parking later. Because as it sits right there without parking in there, I cannot, I, I cannot say yes to it. We're gonna have to work on it anyway. So might as well take it out now, put it back in next year when that, when everything's in a, in when all the ducks are in a row for the parking, and then put it back in next year if that's the decision that we're going to do for parking. That was the discussion part to my amendment. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I, I have not heard a second. I will ask for if there is any further discussion, uh, and just I, I'm to try and uh, set aside any concerns. This this is something that if we do adopt it, we have to discuss again. Uh, so how we would approach it and how we would enforce it and what it would look like is is yet to be determined. Just with regard to uh, parking stalls at City Hall. Uh, the rest of it, we have, you know, we have rules in place to enforce the way water is, is uh, <coughs> fees are collected. If, if, so, hearing no further discussion, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Nay. Motion passes. All right. Thank you all for your comments. That brings us to reports outside agencies. On the top of that list is library. None present. Fire district. None present. Museum. Museum. Rich. You want to give the honors? Uh, no. You sure? <laughs> yes. I'm free. Okay. I'm not on the board. Okay. We had our first meeting uh, Monday last. Uh, we talked about the projects that we've done. Uh, one of the really nice ones was the Winterfest. Uh, we got a lot of donations in there. We don't charge anything for the food that we give everybody. They just donate, and this year was double what we actually put out. 
So we've got a real good start for next year as well. Um, we're going to be adding some more stuff to uh, Pioneer Village, get it a little bit more with more hands-on displays. So that's going to be a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger, a little bit better than it was this year. Uh, Bob Hill takes the lion's share of that, and he just runs with it. He loves doing that stuff. So if you ever see him, tell him thank you. He'd, uh, he'd appreciate that greatly. Uh, he's, he's one of those people. He lives just outside the city limits, and if you know him, he's just real quiet. He's just a really nice guy. But he does so much for that museum. He deserves thanks from more than just me and a couple of the people that are, that are at the museum. Uh, one of the things that I need to talk, and I'll come down to us, come down to the city, to the city hall tomorrow or in the next few days, is getting the restrooms taken care of at the museum. We got the urinal in the men's room that's not working, it hasn't worked for a couple of years, and something's wrong in the ladies' room as well. So we need to get that taken care of. Uh, so By next uh, meeting, we'll have, we'll, we will have some type of. Uh, are you listening, Troy? We What's will that? have some either. It will be trouble shot, and we will have, if not a fix, <coughs> a. Yeah. It was on my report. So, oh, well, hey, I, hey. No, I'm kidding. Are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> You can't do that to us. I'm sorry. <laughs> does that, does that work for you? Yeah, that works okay. for me. Okay, and we're going to hold him to it. Two weeks. Two, Two weeks. weeks. Now you got to show That's up the next meeting. That's the famous saying, right? Two weeks. Two weeks. What are you going to have? Two weeks. Two weeks. Sounds like a movie, I you know. Yes. In any event, um, oh, really good. Yeah. We, we now know that the $16,000 uh, 16, grant that's part of the capital facility fund is in. I called Don Montgomery because I told him that he can't die until that building is finished. <laughs> <laughs> I, <sent him> over <laughs> the edge right there. I called him and told him to get his ducks in a row so as soon as we get the money he can move forward. And what we're going to do with that is we're going to move, uh, and this is just an idea right now, that that money we can just take it and put it at OP Credit Union in a separate account. This way we don't have complete accountability for it. But the rest of the money that we have in a different uh, bank, we're thinking about moving it over to OB so everything is right here. We're not having to travel all over the county to do banking business. And it's easier to ask OB for money too. Yeah. Uh, they've actually given us some money. They didn't give us the big grant that they were that they were hoping to give us, but we did get some much. Yeah. Uh, so we got a letter going out of thanks to them for that. And we're we're going to start talking about instead of just having the milk cart, the the milk truck that uh, Lauren Wright has for Lauren Ackerman has for the parade, and we have the museum sign on it. Uh, we're thinking about coming up with a way to share or just do an actual float. Joyce's idea. Joyce's idea. And we're going to move it down and uh, try to get into the uh, Tom Water Parade as well. This way we get a little bit more visibility. Lake Fair. Lake Fair. Lake I'm, think, Fair. I'm thinking down there. Lake Fair. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's in the beginning stages. We're hoping to get it done this year. If not this year, definitely next year. This year, if you look up here, former mayor got to sign these. We have a new run coming. This is something, this was my idea, and five years went like that. Mm -hmm. So any money that's there, you've got till the end of the year to either keep it, it will always be a collector's item because it was spendable currency within the city borders. And the Mesesis like that kind of stuff. We're going to have a second run starting next year, so as a mayor, you'll be signing that. Did you did you ever see the picture of my two cousins burning the the money? No. <laughs> no. My uncle George Kaiton set Punky and Nadine <laughs> and had them burn the money and he took a picture of them. Punky is ninety two years old. Oh, wow. Nadine is gone, but Punky is still around. She's I did that when they were little girls and the accidentally. Girls, yes. So he girls. what he recreated? No, well, yeah, I don't think much of them recreated. They started a fire in a kitchen stove using yeah. some of, yeah. Jordan, uh, some of his <laughs> wooden The money. short story behind why the money came about was because of the Great Depression. We weren't the only ones that decided to come up with something that tied the businesses and the banks mm -hmm. over until the money started flowing again. But we were the only jurisdiction in the United States that got permission to do it. That's why uh, we found out about four years ago that there was a one dollar to nine bill that was sold on uh, eBay for four thousand dollars. 
So it, it, it does appreciate you yeah, There's some, some on there just recently. Well, there was, was 25, 25 on there just yeah. recently. Yeah. Somebody unloaded their collection, and like one the, guy in Tonino bought all of it. And he told me today, yeah, yeah. He told me that it cost him a lot of money buying up all of it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and you can view it all in his office yeah. <laughs> at the Edward Jones. Yeah. <laughs> The idea behind this was to bring tourist money down in the first year that uh, we had that. The uh, Visitor Convention Bureau bought a bunch of it and gave it out to people to come down here and, and, and to uh, use it down here as well. We didn't expect to make any money off of it. It was just dollar for dollar. And then when you went to spend it someplace, if it was a $2.50 item and you gave them three $1 bills, you got 50 cents back. So there was, it was just to get the, the museum known a little bit more and to get people down here to have a little bit more fun with it. Uh, what we didn't expect is to have $1,600 sitting in the bank for us right now. So it worked out a lot better than I had hoped for with the original idea. Uh, I and think, so are you continuing it? Yes. Okay. This, this year, the, the lot that we ran over the last five years, those will be taken out of circulation. They'll still be worth money because, of the, because they were spendable. Uh, and the new, the new ones will be coming in to replace that. That's why you'll have to, we'll have to get your signature for the, for the lot. So, so make it time right now. Oh, I think that's pretty much it. Okay. We oh, have one more thing. The the biggest the biggest project that we've been working on uh, for quite some time now, uh, again five, six, seven years, is putting the bell on on the school. It looks like we can actually get that done this year. So we've got two really big projects awesome. getting done and a bunch of little things. It's going good. Uh, we have an additional outside agency. TRPC, you're here. You've got us. There's got to be a reason. I, so if you'd like to I just provide a TRPC, I've been here for a while, so I just wanted to come say hi. <laughs> well, would you like to come up and say hi? <laughs> no. Okay. Thank you. I'm going to keep trying. Uh, that brings us to staff. Chief of Police. And Jonathan, give your report. David, I was going to. <laughs> Our health report, I just want to get you guys up to date on the hiring. <clears throat> Public safety testing, we currently have nine applicants uh, that have tested and put their name in for the city. Uh, on the second, we'll close that list. Uh, we'll be putting together an oral board and the whole process as we've done in the past, and we should get somebody hired by the middle of next month. Not a whole lot else going on in the city. It's been very quiet. The school contract, everything's going very well with it. So, uh, knock on wood, everything's going fine. Any questions? I have 15 minutes. <laughs> that brings us to Director of Public Works. I think that was the shortest one. Ever. Ever. Yeah. Ever. Yeah, but you missed a few, so you wouldn't know. I wrote down bathrooms earlier. Okay. Okay. No. I did write down. <laughs> um, let's see here, what do I got to talk about? Um, what was it? <laughs> We will be cleaning the, the reservoirs next week, at least one of them, and then the week after the other one. Um, out the wastewater cleanup plant, we are doing a free air basin, um, draining that, and we're cleaning the, the air, I don't know what they're called down at the bottom, there's kind of these mm -hmm. air beds down there, or whatever. Yeah, aerators. Aerators. Bubblers. Bubblers, or whatever. That's tomorrow. Um, the guys have been working on meters. Not that one, but we have been working on meters. <laughs> Um, uh, well, potholes. We've been uh, getting a lot of complaints about some alleys and, and the right of ways and stuff. And, um, when the county brings me that uh, recycled asphalt for free, is when we put that out. And we haven't had some for a while. Um, we need to bring about a couple of those off. But, um, so they haven't been doing any road stuff. Been doing any road stuff. So when they when they start bringing it to us, we'll be filling some. Alleys up and potholes and stuff like that. Other than that, it's just been like Don says, pretty quiet. No major issues. You guys got anything to make the side sidewalks? I was going to ask. I you got the sidewalks? Yeah, I burnt 
we've already been we, in communication. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Thank we you. will be taking care of that when the weather kind of changes a little bit. Just something that crossed my mind. Yeah. Uh, lately, I've been hearing some people talk about the water, their water coming out gray. That was what? December, the first weekend of December, we, re we received a number of complaints about yes. gray brackish water after the, the count, the district had two consecutive fires night after night, and a lot of water was moved, and there was some, it was kind of, the system they was hammered, hammered on, hammered and, and and that tip, there's some things that's like that happen after that. That's, so that, that was when we received some complaints. Yes, and that's that calcium deposit, or calcium we put into our tanks up in the water wells, mm -hmm. that gives off that um, blackish gray, um, so in that pipe. So when you hit that pipe real hard, it will disperse all that and it comes into water. And it just takes a while to, to flush itself out. Okay. Um, yeah, nothing. No major, no asbestos, none of that stuff, I shouldn't say. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but no, that's not an issue. Get the inspector down here. Yeah. That's why. Yeah, right. <laughs> that's why I'm here. I knew it. Okay. Are you guys got anything? No? Okay. Thanks, sir. Uh, that brings us to City Planner. Another chance. All right. City Attorney, Prosecuting Attorney, we have, you, you have received your report from the Municipal Court. Uh, Clerk Treasurer. Okay, not to rehash anything we've already gone over, the budget is uh, looking decent. So far, it's always hard to tell in January. Public funds investing, uh, we have actually opened a regular checking account with U.S. Bank. That is so that we can put money into to buy securities. Uh, once that account was established, now they are in process of establishing the actual account that will hold the securities once we buy them. And I've been working with Mr. Hallett. He's proposed a... Uh, rolling plan that when uh, we're into it for a full year we'll see three hundred thousand dollars of our funds being invested in the securities we're talking about over a 12-month period and he estimates that if we do that according to this plan that will be bring about sixty thousand dollars of uh, interest into the city's coffers and so annually so we're still working that it's it's going but it's like everything else in government, the wheels turn slowly. Uh, our grants, um, no change to the Yelm Tonino Trail Extension Feasibility Study, no change to the Wayfinding Sign Grant being <laughs> forward by CRPC. As uh, Mr. Mayor mentioned, uh, we, uh, we're anticipating receiving approximately 250000 of reallocated CDBG funds. Uh, the county uh, is going to build a retaining wall at the park and they were going to be the project managers for that but they've come back to us recently and said hey can we just give you guys the money and they said that was our last thing. now they're saying they they they, they yeah. and i'll give that in my report oh, a little okay. bit. what i can say i will i will say so but the bottom line there is we're going to get a retaining wall uh, including a veterans memorial at some point uh, during the year uh, Mr. Mayor mentioned that we uh, have an opportunity to get a $30,000 uh, playground grant courtesy of the Disney Corporation. And uh, as we just mentioned to you, we're going to be applying for a 2018 RCO grant and get our pool well underway. Uh, we thought we were going to escape an audit this year. We didn't. We got a phone call and uh, Mr. Taylor Kenny from the State Auditor's Office will be here tomorrow to do a risk assessment. Uh, Did you give him the right directions you suppose for that? You could have. <laughs> <laughs> so, we're going to find out tomorrow what he's going to look at. He sent me a spreadsheet that's full of crazy questions like, uh, you know, why did we quit doing inter-fund transfers? Well, we told us to. <laughs> we don't need to anymore. Yeah. You know, why, why did we not have inter-fund loans? Because we paid the loans off. It's kind of amusing. Now we're in trouble because we're doing well. Yeah, right. We're doing the right things. Right. Uh, yeah. And uh, the only thing you guys aren't really up on what I'm doing out there is I've got my RFP writer 
hat on and I'm going to be writing a flurry of requests for proposals to get all these grants executed. Pending your question, that's my report. Next up is my report. So uh, 2019 is off to a rapid start with various efforts paying off. These positive outcomes... What? Did I put that in? Dang it! I was writing this before, waiting for Aslan and Perry and then... Not that it's their fault, but I was trying to like, I got a second. Uh, talking about somebody writing the report last second. Yeah. 2018 is off to a rapid start with various efforts paying off. These positive outcomes result in various visions for the city being realized but also create an additional workload. The executive team is working together to face these good problems head on. We have held multiple department head meetings to coordinate spending and contracting plans for an ambitious 2018. I actually wrote 2019. <laughs> these projects will involve various contracts, ILAs, and coordination with multiple agencies, primarily, primarily Thurston County, TRPC, and DOE. Uh, Public Works Director is working closely with water and wastewater services to continue our efforts to improve the wastewater treatment plant's operations and revenue stream through planning for implementation of the SEPTA's receiving program. We have received the master plan from our park consultant, and now we're preparing an RFP, by we I mean him, uh, will, will allow us to hire a consultant grant writer to prepare and submit a grant request through Washington State RCO for some of the master plan's phase two implementation. This would be funded out of the 2018 budget, appropriation for a grant writer, and would come in in 2019. That's where 2019 comes in. And, and we're shooting for approximately $5,000, which leaves us another $5,000 for additional grant writing uh, purposes, which will lead us to TRPC, hopefully. And we are, we're trying to key in on some of the transportation funds that we missed out on last year. Uh, so in, and in our TRPC agreement this year, we put in a, a separate... Uh, like an additional uh, paragraph that where we can use them above and beyond the contract. You know, we got the contract for like thirty-two some thousand dollars and, ch and some change, and in that scope of work, we say, hey, if we want some grant writing and we find some additional money, it's still part of this contract, and we'll just funnel that in there. Uh, and so we're going to try and, and target some of the, you know, the what is it, TIB funds. Uh, so. Hopefully, TRPC will be assisting Troy in his uh, endeavor to find money for our streets. Because he was sweating it when I told him he had to do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, so now we're going to get you some help. Thank you. I found a source. I found a source through the state as well. Okay. Shoot it to me. Uh, we talked about the park, pool, we talked about, uh, and we've, we've got a plan there. We're developing the RFP so that we can now go from master plan to implementation and and hire somebody to get hands-on or hire contractors to get hands-on uh, because we, and this is ambitious, but we want to spend that money and remodel the pool and be able to open it by the beginning of July. Uh, and that, that those are, these are, these are, you know, these are time frames that are gonna, you know, move fast and there, it's going to involve multiple layers of contracts. Uh, so we're trying to figure out exactly how to do that. And that brings up one of the, you know, why we're saying, hey, help us, give us some additional latitude with contracting so that we can, we can, we can make these things happen and get it ready. Uh, the wall was mentioned, the memorial wall. This is a monument. This is not a retaining wall. This is a, a, this is a large natural stone monument built from local stone, Columbia granite, Tanaino sandstone, uh, that would be front and center of the park. And it would and it would include a flag pavilion where a memorial would be housed. And it would be, you know, Tanaino decorative sandstone. And it would be, you know, it's expensive, but the, the county has joined us in this, uh, this pursuit to create this monument. Uh, to the tune of, I think it said 185, but I think it's more like 150 some thousand, and it will allow. You know, we're our, the the uh, the curb appeal of our park is going to be improved, and it's going to create a place where uh, our veterans can be honored. I'm um, working with the county on that. They they've got a lot of rules, and they're trying to work through them, and they're trying to work through them quickly because the commissioners want results, 
and they want them now, and uh, they they're they're working their tails off to get it there. Uh, they were at the beginning of the weeks. One, they were exploring options of how to uh, pass funds on to us so that we could administer some of the funds, and then you know they well maybe we can't do that. So they're now they're pulling them back in and through various. Uh, discussions about how it could be approached they're trying to come to a place by the end of the week where they can they can run on this uh, it, you know be, because this is not a uh, like a like a road project it's it's hard for them because like you know it's kind of through their parks department but their parks department is uh, is uh, is underneath their street and roads department the you know the one or two park people try to go hey let's do this monument that's creative it's you know, it's going to be big and it's going to be beautiful. And then the roads people say, no, that's a retaining wall. You know, our engineers say that it looks like this. And by that, you know, it's only going to cost $5,000 in pure blocks. But then the art, the creative people say, no, 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 it doesn't work that way. You need to have sculptures and you have this, you have that. And so they're trying to figure out how to do these things. And if they can do it, that makes it even better for us. Uh, but we're here to help. The Act Park, you had an update from the EDC. Uh, park cleanup day 2018 so every year for like the last six years we've done a park cleanup day uh, this year uh, I'm hoping and it sounds like there well I know there will be a presentation at the Lions Club on Thursday from the Park Foundation uh, as director James Reddick uh, in the lat in the last couple of years he has got various Lions Clubs on board to work with the schools in their jurisdictions uh, to do a park cleanup day and like around Earth Day. Yeah, and then the Park Foundation awards money to those schools that, that have the best turnout. James wants to bring Tanino on this year and we're really excited about that because then it would, uh, it would, it would be this, instead of the city being the sole group that coordinates it, it would be the city supporting the Lions Club which also recruits the school for a labor force to bring the, the, you know, the youth and the Lions together, show what the Lions Club does, clean up the park, and then also it would make the school eligible to receive, you know, up to $500 from the Park Foundation. So it's a new way to approach the park cleanup day that I think is going to be good for everybody. <coughs> if child labor, not child labor, <laughs> if the Lions <laughs> sign up. <laughs> <next time. laughs> So. Yeah. Plus benefits. Yeah. Plus. <laughs> yeah. Plus. It's not a retaining wall. Uh, that's it for my report. I'm done. Did you get all that, Rona? Committees and commissions. Civil Service Commission. Civil Service Commission is met. We've been waiting for the oral board. Organization. Let's get up to the. You need to stand to the. Yeah. For once, we want you to come to the microphone, Leslie. <laughs> Civil Service uh, Commission has met. Um, the three commissioners and Maria were together. We're waiting on um, guidance from the chief and Maria as to what our next step is, and I believe it'll be the oral boards. And so we're just waiting for everything to happen, and so we'll meet again next month. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Park Commission, no Planning Commission. We have a brown wig back there, so you can act like a train. <laughs> <laughs> Finance committee has now had public safety facade improvement grant review committee. <laughs> so, what, so how do we kick that off this year? Well, I've already can, uh, handed out some more applications. So. Okay. And the uh, the Eagles uh, assures me that as soon as the weather will cooperate, they are ready to start. They're ready to start the work on the front of the Eagles building. So. That's done. I've given, out, uh, of course, um, the uh, antique mall, and I talked to Brad, the owner of the antique mall, about that, and he's he's working on some, something. Joyce um, at the Ironworks wants an application. She's working on an application, and Sandstone Salon has asked for an application down to them. So. Okay. Let's. Uh, do we have? We need a window. We need a grant. Submission Window. period. Okay. So, uh, and I, I would ask that your committee decide when they're ready to open up the grant review process. So, 
Are you guys are you guys meeting? Or you can probably call them all. Well, I'll we'll just have to call them all. Okay. Unless they want to meet me evening, because you know I'm working all day. Yeah. So. So, so maybe reach out to your committee okay. and ask them when they want to start reviewing applications, and then the city, us, will have to put out a notice so that we make sure that everybody gets equal opportunity to apply. We'll put out a notice, and we'll say we are accepting applications between this date and this date. So if you could help us figure out what those dates should be, and then when that closes, it would be time for the grant review committee. So when you're when the ledge, you know when the ledge is done, That's March I'll be through March eighth. Okay, so after that time, you could say, all right, we're going to close it March whatever, and then the grant review committee starts looking okay. through the grants, and then we we do it all again. Maybe that... I should put another meeting together that maybe it's a sandstone on Saturday with the business owners again, like we did before. I'll do that. Okay. Yeah, we just want we want to make sure we get the piece where it goes out to everybody and we're not, you know. Okay, liaisons. Uh, B dad, do we have a representative here? Well, I was been I have been going for the last few years, and one of the things I keep telling them is that we need younger representation. I'm 60 years old. There's no way that I can really relate to a high school kid. Or, or a middle school kid and understand what they're going through without, oh, shut up, kid. I did that when I was young. I got through it, you know? Try it this way. So what, but, but they do have to have somebody from government on there. And I'm, ask, I'm asking uh, either Jason or Susan to take up that role because you guys both have kids in school, right? So it, it may, it's a much better fit for one of them to be on that board. I was there for five years, six years. God, it's a long time. That flies. Okay, community uh, investment partnership. Uh, we have, Callahan. yeah, we have a uh, a mutual uh, mutual understanding that we're going through right now, and we have the uh, retreat. I hate that word. Uh, that is for our next <coughs> meeting. I'm doing as much homework as uh, as I can on this because I think. We may be sitting on the wrong board because this is dealing with different things that may not apply. And as I get better educated on it, I'm going to make a recommendation to see if we shouldn't be switching. I don't have I don't have paperwork in front of me, so I can't give you the exact thing. But there's one group that deals specifically with housing, and that sounds more what we need to be looking at than helping United Way give out funds. So there's a lot of homework I'm, that I'm going through. I've got a meeting for orientation. Uh, just We're trying to set up a date on that before the, uh, before the, uh, the retreat. And I do want to talk to you a little bit about what you know about CIP as okay. well. I think they were surprised that somebody was doing homework. Uh, Economic Development Council, we had a, a report from them. Is there anything from steady that you want to include? Uh, no, no steady is paying dividends to the economic community here, and the city is really in a support role in that regard. But um, Linda sits in on, on a lot of those steady meetings when she has the time too. So, um, <coughs> well, right now we've got a big push for Shop South oh. too, um, which you know, it starts in uh, uh, Rochester, Dakota, to Nino, yet Rainier, Yelm, and then it goes clear up to McKenna Roy. Uh, McKenna. Um, we're working very hard on get, getting having businesses sign up for shops out. We've um, the three chambers: Yelm, Rochester, and Tenino all gave uh, donated money and so we've used that to make posters and window clings and, and just getting the word out about coming to the South County to uh, shop. That's what well that may have been putting on their economic development workshops we that many of our merchants, yes. merchants have been taking advantage of. So it's a good program. I, I think it's paying dividends but we're, you know, the city government doesn't see it but our community does. Right, exactly. John, you want to explain the A-frame thing a little bit better? It was the first meeting I've been to for a little while, one of the Cheryl's uh, buying, and it's going to go 
can be a, a traveling A frame. Okay, never mind. All right. Uh, we added legislative update since we've got an expert among us. I guess. Absolutely. Not a lot to report. We know that the capital budget did pass. I had a little bit of palpitations when I looked at the report. The governor did a partial veto on it, and I couldn't get the report on to what the veto was until today. <laughs> uh, it was just that was for higher education buildings. It didn't involve us, and I was a little worried. but. And then the water uh, permit bill passed. Um, basically, they're just allowing for the rural areas to do more, to be able people that have invested money in property to be able to dig a well without going <coughs> through hoops. The biggest change is that the counties now can go back to the Department of Ecology and don't have to spend their own money for all the studies and things. That's the biggest thing. Um, and they were doing pilot prog uh, projects in the water resource inventory areas, YREP. Uh, one's in Ellensburg and one's in at Dungeness um, to, put, to put meters on wells, but it's not going to affect us either. So that's probably. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Do you want to talk to them about the uh, carbon tax? Not really. Okay. Why not? The gun issues. Uh, <laughs> well, these are things that are all going to affect us, especially um, since. Go ahead. Did, I have to do some more work on it. Next meeting. Yeah, I will. I'll report. Okay. It next okay. Uh, solid Waste Advisory Board. Well, somehow I put the wrong date in my calendar, so I sat in the parking lot for a while wondering why nobody was showing up. <laughs> Went in the building thinking, oh, maybe everybody's already in there, and nobody was there, so uh, the I missed the last uh, Solid Waste Advisory Committee. But I do have on my calendar the correct day for the TRPC meeting coming up uh, on the 2nd, so I'll skip the TRPC part. That meeting is the coming on the 2nd, Friday. TCOM 911, we still don't receive reports on that. Tonight, a school board, uh, you attended. Do you have anything to? Oh, no. Okay. It was a very quick meeting. It was a quick meeting. I have something, uh, if I may. Why not? From the school board meeting. Um, oh, he was paying attention, but Don wasn't. <laughs> well, this didn't relate to uh, Don very much, but yeah. uh, <laughs> during their last home game of the season, the Tonight Girls basketball team held senior night. It's, it's their comment. Uh, their their uh, uh, usual practice, but they have one senior, Elena Dowies, by the way, who I believe is the granddaughter of, uh, of John Dowies. Um, but in, when they recognized her at the ceremony, they also recognized the only senior on the Hoquiam uh, team. His father was an officer as well. Yeah, and uh, I spoke to uh, uh, yesterday to the uh, athletic director at Hoquiam, and he said in his, all his years of coaching, he's never seen anything like it. It impressed uh, the people from Oakland very much, and I have to say it impressed me as well. Have you gotten the letter that they sent to the school? If you're going to do an article on it, it's a very nice story. I mentioned it. It was mentioned during the school board meeting. I did not attend that game, uh, and I did mention it during in my uh, girls' basketball story. Oh, okay. I was going to say, get a copy of the letter, and it's it's all in yeah. there. Because there's but it, they I also give reflects... some kudos to the police department. It's a really nice letter about the community. But yeah, the action reflects in the best uh, way on uh, Tanayo High School in the city of Tanayo. Yeah. Just uh, out of curiosity, what was the name of the girl? Crone? Crone, yes. She was uh, Oakland's leading scorer. They won 42 to 36. You can leave that under the air. Because it was part of this story about the game. Yeah, yeah. 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 Thanks, Dan. Uh, uh, now we have a spot for TRPC under liaisons. I guess there, there is. Oh, you take oh, that no. nine no. Nine no. There we go. Oh, yeah. there is. There's one thing that I'd add around around the the water bill, um, just because it it may matter to Tonino in the future. As part of fixing Hearst, they also tried to address the Supreme Court, the Foster decision as well, that, that affects cities. And the main issue with the Foster decision was the Supreme Court had found that to mitigate for water rights, a city had to 
put water back into the system. And that affected the city of Yelm because Yelm had agreement with the Nisqually tribe and Olympia and Lacey to do other kinds of mitigation to mitigate for the water that they were taking out of the system. This bill used uh, Yelm and three other cities as pilot projects to develop th those kind of alternative ways to do mitigation for municipal water. And so as, as Tonino continues to grow, I know that there's some questions about water availability for Tonino. So that might be something that you want to pay attention to as these pilot projects are on the foster decision. I haven't heard anything about Yale. I heard you've done and, and, and something. There were a number of, number of different pilots, and, and as, as you know, in bills, they can't name cities. So what it says is a city in Thurston County with a population between 8,000 and 10,000. Okay, okay, okay. And so, Rhymes with exactly, exactly. <laughs> so they're, they're a pilot to look at alternative ways to mitigate for water withdrawal. So that's something you might want to pay attention to, yeah. too. Thanks. What else you got? Yeah, that, that's, right that's, that's it for now. Okay, okay. <laughs> Transportation Policy Board. Okay, hopefully everybody got the after meeting report. One of the things that I did want to mention is that we're going to be looking at the bylaws. We appointed a citizen representative, or was it business? I think it was business. A uh, business representative that could not fulfill their term. So what we're doing is we're going to appoint, this is speculation, appoint Angela White. She's from the same business. The problem that we have is that normally we go out, to go out for and ask who wants to be on the board. This one here, and this part is just me, before we change the bylaws, I want to see why it was set up that way. And if it, if it does make sense to go ahead and change the bylaws. Because otherwise, let's say we're all one business here, I say I'll take TPB, that doesn't mean that you automatically, so if I can't do it like with a be that, that somebody else on this board would be able to take it. In other words, we own that seat as a business. And that's my problem with, with it. Even though I know Angela White, I've known her for a long time, she'll be a good representative, but the process was not followed. And we're going to be looking at the bylaws to see if, they, if that's going to change. I hope not, but that's the big, for me, that's a really big issue. Whenever you start talking about changing bylaws, that's a little tweaky stuff that can really change a lot. Thank you. All right, that brings us to public comment period number two. If there's anyone in the audience that would like to provide public comment, please step forward and do so at this time. You'll be given three minutes. State your name and address, please. That's why he didn't turn the mic on before. He forgot. <laughs> Leslie Lamb, 118 Walter Street. Box ticket. 23. 24. 12. 3. Mr. Mayor, I'm here by request of the uh, people of Tonino. <coughs> They're up in arms. There are protest signs being made now. They're demanding pizza <laughs> oh. with pineapple. Oh. Oh no. They will soon be protesting. Oh, nice about you. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, sir. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty good. <laughs> Darn you. <laughs> uh, okay, if there's anyone else in the public that would like to provide comment, are you are you stepping up? Yeah, let's do it. Come on up, sir. <coughs> Hi, good evening. Um so, my name is Kevin Wolf. I am from, from uh, Tumwater, uh, re here representing uh, the uh, SCA Barony of Glamere, and just wanted to um, come and appear and to announce that we are formally in, uh, well, we're going to be formally in the planning stages for the Mayfair coming in May. Uh, uh, I forgot the dates. Oh, yeah, 11th through the 13th. And um, if you have any uh, feedback 
from past events, we welcome that. Um, we look for where you have some great ideas. We've met, uh, we've met with uh, the mayor um, and have some great ideas for this coming event uh, that we hope will make it bigger and, well, eventually bigger, uh, but definitely better than uh, the years before. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Uh, yes. I've got a boatload of pictures from last year's if you guys want them. Um, I mean a boatload of pictures. <laughs> we know it. We love pictures. We love to, we love to have, have those um, at least for our own uh, purposes, and sometimes uh, we can use it for um, promotional purposes to, to, to basically <laughs> just say, you know what, come to our event. Uh, yeah, and, I don't uh, care what you're doing. Join us. If you want them, give me some, give me some information so I can get them to you. Oh, sure. Because there's well over 150. Oh, awesome. Yes. I can forward him your email. Okay, that, that would be great. Uh, if I remember. <laughs> okay, I'm Mr. Wolf. Uh, I, I think that your event has been a great addition to tonight, and I'm glad that you guys are sticking with us and oh, yeah. you got our full support. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the audience that would like to provide public comment at this time? Please step forward. Hearing that? Last chance, Mark. All right. Uh, that brings us to announcements. We have uh, the walk talk with Thurston County Commissioner John Hutchings, February, Friday, February 16th. Joint Commissioner John Hutch Hutchings and County staff for some chips and guacamole and discussion about uh, 20, 2017 and 2018 in review. Uh, that will be in Chenino from 1130 to 1230. Also, uh, we are looking, we're, we're talking to the school, the school is surplusing a significant number of iPads at a very low rate, so we are contacting them about, uh, we want to not use these for council meetings anymore. We want you guys to walk in and have an iPad mounted in front of you with it pulled up on board docs already, you're logged in, and then you follow along as such and we'll have yeah and we'll have a lock cabinet and also the civil service commission doesn't have computers the planning commission doesn't have computers so they don't really have the same access we do because they don't have these so if we would move from a your computer uh, type program to a walk-in and it's on your screen type program for everybody so that is uh, any further announcements I'd, I'd, I'd like to have uh, people go to Guac Talk. I can't go because I'm working, and I've okay. already told Kelly that. But he needs people there to talk to. John does. Commissioner Chase does. Yeah. Yeah. The same thing you say, John, is it no? Thank you all. Thank you. Future agenda items I'd like to place on our future agenda. Uh, we are now uh, for you. I thought I, I thought I recognized you. I was like, what? Yeah. 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 I was like, yes. 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 Set up a fun. Oh, I'm sure. 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 Oh